I don't know how many of you know this, but this is my 100th video on YouTube. Like, I have 99 videos. And I was like, when someone brought it to my attention, because I didn't even know that I had uploaded 99 videos to YouTube. So someone asked, like, what would your, what will your 100th video be about? Make it something special, make it something interesting. So I was like, I really put up 99 videos. So when I looked, it was 99 videos. So this video here is the 100th video as far as my uh, YouTube uploads. So I said, so what should it be about? So I thought I want it to be something sort of interesting, something sort of different. So I sort of went against the fitness thing. I wanted to talk more about um, me, which I'm not that exciting. I don't have that much of an exciting life, but I wanted to talk more about me. So um, I thought about, so what should it be about concerning me? And I thought about some of the questions or some of the controversy surrounding Buffy, just me as basically Buffy the body. I've never really spoke about um, some of these things since I've been in the fitness industry. So I say, you know what? A couple of these questions I've answered when I was Buffy the body and when I was modeling, but I've never really touched on these topics since I've been in the fitness industry. Because I look at it like this, I had a certain type of following when I was doing the music videos and the magazines and all of that, and at, my following was majority men. Like, I had, like, the base of my followers and fans were men. Well, with Bodynomics, most of my following uh, followers are women. So, I decided that I would address this because there are women that that's not familiar with Buffy the Body. You know, it's just this girl popped up on the screen you know, popped up on the scene um, with this huge behind and she's talking about fitness. So who is she really? So where did she come from? So um, I wanted to talk about uh, sort of like my little past background for those of you who, you know, you see posts and you see people saying things about me and you've never really heard me address any of them because one thing, one question that was like a big controversy with Buffy the Body was my behind, whether it was real or whether it was fake. So I answered that question like in all of my magazine interviews, radio interviews, I've answered that question a million times. but. That was in that industry. I haven't really addressed that particular question or talked about it since I've been in the modeling. I mean, not the modeling, sorry. Since I've been in the fitness industry. So I wanted to talk about that. And I also wanted to talk about, you know, my lifestyle as Buffy the Body and how did it get over into the fitness game? Because I hear people do ask me, like, so why did you give up the hip-hop modeling industry? Like, you know, how, why? Basically, how and why. So those are two of the main things I want to talk about in this video. Okay, um, I had to take notes, a little notes, because this, I had to think back la the latter part of 2004 and 2005, because that's when all the hoopla about Buffy the body started. So, um... I'm not going to get in depth with it because I'm sure a lot of people ain't really that concerned about it. But I'm just going to sort of talk about why did I get out of that industry and why am I over in this industry. So first of all, um, I was considered, you know, 
an urban urban model um, video girl or whatever you know everybody have their own name um, that they call that industry but um, they called it mainly urban modeling the hip-hop industry the video vixen or whatever so I started off in that industry like um, in 2005 was like when everything burst open or when Buffy the body burst onto the set on onto the scene um and I guess most people know that with urban modeling with the African American women there's only so far that we can go in that industry like let's be real it's not a career driven type industry where you can just retire and all of that it's like when I got into that industry, I knew that it would be very, very short lived. I went into that industry knowing that it would be short lived. Um, I didn't expect it to last as long as it did for me because, like I said, I started in 2005. And even today, as I sit here, I still get booked for events. And I haven't been in a magazine. Or on television since like 2007 2008 I think my last TV appearance was the Tyra Banks show and that was 2008 and my last um, photo shoot was 2008 and Lord Lord knows I haven't done a video since like um, 2007 2006 2007 Seven was like my last music video but I was never the video girl like people call me anyway because I've only done three music videos believe it or not so I'm sure most models have done like five times more videos than I but it was just my choice to only you know I when I got to that third I didn't want to do them anymore but okay back to so you know getting into that industry I knew I wasn't going to last long cause who does but like I said it lasted longer than I had thought it would and I was grateful like I, I was it was a blessing that it lasted that long and I was able to do all the things I was able to do but like I said I knew it would last long I knew eventually I was gonna have to find something else to do so um I'm gonna just name some of the things that I had to write, I had to think of that I did and why, you know, I did eventually get out of the industry. First of all, I had done all the magazines. Who's ever familiar with that industry know there's not a lot of magazines. Like it's not a ton of magazines that we can appear in. It was only seven major magazines that was mainstream that we could be in, like us urban model, slash video girls there was only seven magazines and those seven magazines was black men black men ssx edition which which is the swimsuit extra edition it was smooth it was vibe it was double xl it was king and source so out of those seven magazines i know i've done those magazines each several times so far as the magazine magazine game that was about like I've done all I could do far as the magazine because I had been in those magazines like several times each so and it was only one of them that paid and that was the black men SSX edition now if you was one of those lucky models who was able to you know get that magazine then you was good because that magazine as i can remember there's only been like maybe maybe five models that was able that was big enough to even have a ssx issue and the ssx issue was basically an issue where you was featured 95 percent through the entire magazine you was on the cover and 95 percent of the magazine was about that model and i had like what maybe four or five of those issues dedicated to just me now that issue the ssx issue pays well but the other six magazines i named like king um the other black men smooth by they don't pay anything so 
you got to think like if the models are not getting that SSX issue, which I say only like five of them was ever able out of like 2,000 models that I've seen, only five of them was really able to get that SSX issue. Five or six, I think. Around is very a very very low number, and I was one of those models. So. Um, Moving on from the magazine, so I've done all the magazines. There was nothing else to do with the magazines. Next was uh, the website. Like back in 2005, April of 2005, I put up BuffyTheBody.com, and you talking about an overnight sensation? When I tell you that I was making crazy money, I was getting crazy checks weekly from that website. And the beautiful, the lovely thing about it, I didn't have to pose nude, no porn, didn't have to show no, just be real. I didn't have to show no private area. I didn't have to show no breast. I didn't have to show, you know, your, your inside. I didn't have to do anything crazy. It was strictly swimsuit. And you would get like a model back then who would start a website. If you was popular enough, uh, enough of course, you could get crazy. You could live off just those checks, like pay rent, car note, um, shopping. You could live good off just that. But that doesn't even exist no more. Like you got so many women now who's like with these Twitters and Facebook who get on the internet and just show it all and, you know, not getting paid for it and they're just so um, hooked on the fame of people like, you know, the Twitter followers and all of that where they're just bearing it all and not getting one dime. And like I said, back then the models who, you know, was in the, the game with me, we would get paid crazy money just to have on swimsuit just sexy swimsuit we would get paid checks every week so that really doesn't exist no more because like I said you got all these social networking sites with these women that's like just new completely new so why would someone pay to come and see you on your paid website where you just have on nice swimwear if you're on Twitter but naked basically or just bearing it all so I think a lot of the models the, the newer models messed it up basically messed it up for themselves because like Twitter is like saying like now it's all about how many Twitter followers I got if those Twitter followers are not converting it into some type of income then to me it, it just it doesn't make sense what some of these females are doing now Versus, like I said, back when I was doing it in the modeling game, when I started, you know, it was just, it was easy breezy. Like, you didn't have to do much of nothing. If you had a big name, you was good. So, the websites, I don't see models putting up websites no more. So, that's basically obsolete. I just took down my paid website this year. So from 2005 to this year, I was still generating income. Of course, over the years, the income got lower and lower, but that was another source of great income at the time. The next thing were, was wallpapers and ringtone for mobile. Of course, no one is paying for that now, but back when I was modeling, quarterly, the quarterly checks was awesome. Like... We would go, like the models around my town would go in the studio, record voice, um, ringtone, and we would take do photo shoots for wallpapers. And people would actually go to these mobile websites and download our ringtones and wallpapers. Like, I'm sure some of y'all remember, like, some of my commercials that used to run on, like, um, BET for the mobile wallpapers and ringtones. So that was another thing that's not available now to the models that was available for us back then. So that was another stream of income that's not even around anymore. The next thing is um, the urban clothing line for women. Like back in 05, 04, 05, 06, you had like 
the urban clothing line, men and women, you know, was thriving, like was crazy. You could open a magazine and see all type of nice ads for Azure and academics and baby fat and Nietzsche, even fetish. I don't know anyone, any of you remember fetish. Uh, that was Eve's clothing line. Like all of those clothing lines back then was pretty popular. And the models, like us urban models, was able to, you know, have campaign ads with these uh, urban clothing lines. So I specifically worked with Azure. So I did a campaign ad with them. And, um, you know, back then, Baby Fat and Nietzsche and all of them would give me, like, clothes to wear to events and just, you know, because they, you know, I guess wanted to see some of the top urban models with their clothing on. So that was like gravy back then, like so great. Like, so that was another stream of income that's not available now because most of those clothing lines are not around no more or they don't have the advertising dollars to give these urban models. So that's no longer around. The next thing is the music video. Now, back in the day when I started, you get paid crazy loot to do a music video. Now, I'm sure some of these models are still getting something, but just the things I see now where these models are doing music videos for free. Um, now, I don't know. It's just... I think a lot of these models these days make it hard for their sales because they're selling out so badly. But you know, back then we would get nice checks to do music videos. Like I said, I've only done three, but well, two of them I got paid really well, but one of them I did as a favor for a friend. It was a guy that I was really cool with. That was like the last video I did, but I did it for him on the strength, so of course I didn't charge him anything, but um, the two times, the other two times before that I got paid well, you get treated well, you get paid well, you get put in nice hotels, you get flown to these video shoots. Now these, you know, some of the girls are having to fly themselves to these photo shoots. Um, they're not really getting paid because all they want is to be able to tweet on Twitter that they're doing a photo shoot or doing a video shoot and not really getting compensated like they should. So they're selling themselves completely, like just short. So to me, the video um, industry, the video girl, you know, doing the music video is not even profitable no more like it were back when, you know, I was modeling or when I came around. So to me, Unless you're doing a video every single week and you're getting paid good money, I don't see how any model these days could live off music videos. I don't watch the music. I don't even watch like music videos at all. I cannot tell you the last time I watched a music video, but um, and I don't know like who's the video girl now or who's the popular rapper. No, I, I I'm like so completely abandoned from that industry now. Like I'm so like not into it that I don't know what's going on but I have friends that still in the industry and I basically hear some of this stuff and I'm like wow so so that was another thing and hosting like party hosting is probably where I made the bulk of my money from the party hosting when I tell you that I've done probably easily over um, three, four hundred parties. Like, I, I was like from city to city. I was moving around so much where I almost forgot. Like, I would get up the next morning and had to think, like, what city am, I, city am I in today? You know, just off and on planes. But you get treated well, you know, and you make good money. Like, I've even gotten booked, you know, I guess the highlight is being booked out of the country where people actually know you in other countries like Amsterdam and 
the U UK and Montreal and Trinidad and just like it was it was great it was great so I made a lot of money but you know at the end of the day even that eventually slowed down and even the models now are not getting paid what we was getting paid back then and when I say we we'll talk about some of the girls who was really popular back when I was modeling and you know you got your Gloria Velez, you got your um, Vita Guerrera, um, Melissa Ford, Esther Baxter, um, me, um, Coco, um, and it sort of, like it was sort of cut off right there after Coco, like I don't remember like who really did anything after like um, Coco. Um, but those was the main girls back when I was modeling. So, and you know, those are the ones that I can remember really vividly. But um, yeah, so, you know, and I, I was at one time, I was a writer for some of the um, magazines, so I would get paid for that. But, you know, all of that, like, is a very short, scope of like what you can actually do in that industry so I think I did absolutely everything in that industry that I could possibly do without lowering myself or selling myself out or whatever so um, I knew you know once I've done everything it was time to move on it was nothing else left to do in that industry like it's not a runway type of modeling industry. We're not high profile um, runway models where we're on all of the cover of these big magazines and all of that. And we're going to all these different countries doing fashion shows and stuff. We, we wasn't really models. We They called us urban models, but we weren't modeling really any clothing, clothing or anything. So... Um, it's just, I've done everything. I, I think I did every single thing in that industry that I could possibly do. So I just felt like um, in 2008 when I said, okay, no more. And, you know, I was still getting offered to be in magazines and do music videos, but I just didn't see no point in it anymore. Like, I think I had done everything that I could do, so it was just time to move on. So, like, I started Bodynomics in 2007, but a lot of people wasn't familiar with it because I wasn't really promoting it. But I first put up a site for Bodynomics in 2007. Well, back then it was called Bootynomics, but since then it's changed to Bodynomics. So, uh, I just really started promoting it in 2008. So, the only thing I still do as far as the urban modeling... I'll still host events. Like I was just in Alaska. I got booked in Alaska Alaska a couple of weeks ago. So I still get booked and I'll still host events. But as far as the video shoots and the magazines and all of that, to get me to even consider doing one of those again, it has to be like super, super major. It has to be something that would really, really like help me financially and just you know far as career wise so yeah so that's why I eventually gave up that industry because it was nothing left to do like to me to try to stay in that industry and still be relevant now you're talking about a whole total different ball game it is not even modeling and the urban modeling and videos no more now you're talking about what how can I stay relevant like I need to stay relevant I want to stay in this industry and I want to stay relevant and you're gonna start selling yourself out eventually you're gonna start like hitting rock bottom and to me it's only like a few things that you can resort to after you've done all the good things you could either either um try to get on a reality show and make a complete mockery of yourself because think about it the women who's on these reality shows 
you only become that it girl where you're able to travel and host events and all of that is when you that it girl on the reality show and you got to be acting a plum fool like you got to be like making a mockery of yourself so I didn't want to do that um a lot of the girls now are becoming dancers and ex exotic dancers just so they can get booked. And, you know, I see some of the girls making pretty good money with that. But, like I said, you have to become an exotic dancer or a dancer or something. And, like I said, have to be booked as a dancer. And I didn't want to go that route. Um, the next thing, you can start sleeping around with all the rappers and entertainers and producers and you know, people, you, you can become like an industry girl or called or whatever. You can start sleeping around basically. And even if you decided to do that, how long is that going to last after you, you know, you slept around with everybody? So I didn't want to go that route. And the, the, the um, other thing was um, you could like the ones that were still trying to model, you could start look, doing more suggestive, subjective type of photos. But then, you know, you're thinking like, how many photo shoots can you do before you start having to, before you have to start changing it up a little? So now you're like, okay, I think I'll show a breast. Or, okay, maybe I'll show just some pubic hair. So you start getting more creative in the mind and next thing you know you're completely posing new like showing it all or you are now sort of slid into semi or almost porn you, you're doing porn now so those are like four options that you know I had but no no so um I just decided to start doing something that I was becoming extremely interested in because I knew I was getting older and my body started changing and I'm looking at these and I'm like, I'm trying to learn how to keep my body together because I don't want to be the girl that they say, oh, she used to be so fine. What the, what happened? So I, I don't like to hear that because I hear that about women and I'm like, I don't want to be one of those females that they said that about. So I'm, I was trying to keep my body together because being in the modeling industry, most people didn't know at the time, but I was older than most of the um, models in that industry. I started older. I started at a later time than most of the models get into that industry. I started late and I also, I was much older than probably all of the models in that industry around that time. So, like, my, I noticed my body started changing and I was trying to keep it together and, you know, that's how I became even more interested in working out in fitness. And people always came to me about the uh, modeling and about trying to keep their body, not the modeling, but while I was in the modeling industry, they came to me about keeping my body, how did I keep my body together and what did I eat or whatever. So I always found myself trying to give advice, but it was only personal advice about what I had been through. So it just eventually I just found myself being all the way into the fitness field because like it really dawned on me when I did the Tyra Banks show and I came out of the show when the show was over and I came outside there was actually literally women standing there wanting to get advice about their butt, their ways, how to work out and all of that. So I think then when I left that Tyro Banks show, I said, I'm going full time with this. I'm going to give it all my give it all I got and I'm going to see where it goes. And it's been good. It's, it, I, I've been I really been enjoying it. I really, really, really enjoy it. And I see something lifelong with it because fitness is so multi-dimensional. It's so widespread. It doesn't, like the hip hop industry, sort of lim you limit yourself because you're in a certain genre, you're dealing with a certain type of people, you know. But with fitness and health, it's so worldwide. Like 
from this part of the globe to this part of the globe to this person at this age, young person to the elderly, to the white people, to the black people, to the Asian people, to the Trinidadians. It doesn't matter. Health and fitness, exercise, nutrition is so worldwide. And I felt like it was a void there anyway, anyway, because there was not a lot of black curvy women that was really promoting fitness because like they say, they try to say most of us don't even work out anyway. So, you know, I, I felt like maybe this, this is me and it's been decent. I, I, I really, really, it's been slow. It didn't pop off like the Buffy the Body did, but it's been progressing and I see it. I see the growth. I see the growth in myself. Like my mind and everything is totally even the way my thought process, the way I think, the way I act, even the way I dress, everything has changed because, you know, I am older now, much more mature, and just, you know, I'm loving life a little more now. Like, I'm enjoying life. I'm getting to know myself and just getting to appreciate things that maybe I didn't appreciate when I was younger. So, um, this takes me into... The next part of my questions and the next part would be about my butt. Is it real or is it fake? And this is a very interesting topic to say the least because um, how did all of it start about the butt being real, fake or whatever? A lot of people don't know. It didn't start when I got into the Buffy the Body industry. It started way before then, like way before I was Buffy the Body. It started when I started gaining weight and, you know, my butt started getting huge. And it was like, most people know it don't take much to gain weight. Once you started inhaling these calories or consuming these calories, it don't take much. For you to start growing. So, um, yeah, I started getting a really nice ass. <laughs> I really did. Like, I, in the initial beginning phase, I was even shocked. I was, but, because, you know, my oldest sister had a booty and my grandmother had a booty. But, you know, like, my mother, she was sort of on the slim side. She had a little booty, but... Probably if she gained weight, she probably would have had a nice booty too because she had one as a slim, uh, as being slim. So, um, yeah, so, you know, it was it was sort of shocking that, you know, with the started gaining weight and start putting in a little exercise here and there, there, how my body did start changing. So, it, it's just like when I started gaining the weight and the butt started taking shape, I don't know, a lot of people just, I guess a lot of people just couldn't deal with it, just, you know, women can be very, very hateful, the women, like, we can be so hateful to each other, so I just started hearing, like, I don't know, maybe they couldn't take the fact that I was getting attention, I don't know, but, <sighs> Yeah, I, 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 that's when I start hearing all the rumors about, you know, she wearing butt pads. I think butt pads was first. Like, oh my gosh, she's wearing butt pads. But then I guess when they realized it wasn't butt pads, then it went into other things. Like she's taking hormone shots. I think I, uh, that was next after the butt pads. And then after that, people were saying that I was going to Atlanta, Atlanta, hanging with the gays and doing some type of injections or something that gay people take. I was going to Atlanta getting that. Then it went from that to I was getting silicone shots. Then it went from that to I had implants. Like I had literally went and got implants. Then it went from that to the butt injections. I think the butt injections might have been Hold on, did they say fat drafts too? I think I heard the fat drafts rumor too. I, I've heard it all. Trust me, I've heard it all. 
my poor little butt I went through all types of um, ridicule. <laughs> But back to what I was saying. So, yeah, the rumor started way before I became Buffy the Body. So, don't think the Buffy the Body, me blowing up as Buffy the Body, it started. It started way before. Um, and I, like I said, I contribute a lot of it to just genetics because um, I weigh more. Like, my lower body has much more going on than my upper body. I've never been just really big in my upper body. Um, it's like between my knees and my lower waist yeah i carry most of my weight so uh with the exercise and the weight gain yeah that the body started coming and so did the rumors so um and i i admit in the beginning it did sort of bother me that people would just make up these rumors and i'm not gonna say it was just the females because i've heard guys say it too you know there's even <sighs> And it's hard, still hard to believe that a guy would even hate. But there were guys that was hating too. But it was mainly the females just couldn't deal with it. Just, just oh my God. So these women were just making up all of these rumors and just saying all types of things about me. So I'm like, gracious. So then I became Buffy the Body and then the rumors really exploded. Oh, then, then the rumors became worldwide. Like, she's taking chicken peels. What the? What is chicken peels? Can someone out there tell me what is chicken peels? Chicken peels make my butt big. Like, I don't know. I just heard, like, do people go to bed at night and think about what to say and then wake up the next morning and say, okay, we're going to say that her butt did this. Or, I don't know. But at the end of the day, <sighs> I have to wonder about some of these people who make up these rumors. Like, what type of female that would sit around and just sit and just make up rumors about somebody they don't even know? Don't even know. Like, even the people from my hometown. Everybody who knew me from my hometown only knew that I only hung out with a very select few, girl, few girls. And once, being, once I left Georgia altogether, I didn't have no friends in Georgia. It was only two people in um, my hometown of Athens that I only kept in contact with because the rumors just, would just they were just so hateful. They had just got so hateful at one time, just wanted, they were just, I don't know. I, I just couldn't believe some of the things that how these women was acting. So I'm like, you know what? Like I said, in the beginning stages, it bothered me. But then as I grew, I'm like, I don't have the problem no more. You know, it's not me. I, so I'm not blaming myself because I never had a problem. It was they the one who got the problem and they are the ones who have to deal with whatever is going on in their mind. Whether, you know, I think a lot of these women and this just is my own observation. This is me. This is how I think. When you say bad things publicly about people and when you're not mindful of what comes out of your mouth, you don't care. So if you don't care about other people, you don't care about yourself. You, you can't if you're not mindful of what you say because you don't know whether you're hurting someone. You don't know exactly what you're doing to the person you're saying all this bad stuff about. So I feel like they these people have um, lack of self-confidence. That's one thing. They have extreme, extremely low self-esteem. That's just what I think. I really think this. I think that they have turmoil within their life, social and personal. They got some type of grief or turmoil or something going on in their life that's making them act like this. And I also think that they, they expect little from life because this type of behavior, you can't expect too much from life. It's just, I, I just think these people are unhappy. For you to publicly get on a computer or to publicly get on a radio and say things about people that you don't even know. So these people need some self-reflection. They really, really, they need self-reflection back. And I would say 
self-reflection with a little, throw in a little professional help from a counselor or something because they got it bad. So it got to the point where I, it didn't even, I didn't care no more. I, you know, I answered in my interviews back when I was Buffy the Body about whether my butt was real or fake. I told people it was 100% real. Um, and I answered that question 50 million times. And my butt is real. It's 100% real. Mixed with fat, um, muscle, and tissue, water, or whatever else that runs through your body, blood, or, or whatever. But my butt is real. And I've said this 50, 50 million times, but there's some people out there just want to believe what they want to believe. And guess what? I'm not in the convincing game. I'm not into trying to convince no one. That's not my job. That's not why I'm here. So whatever you want to believe from this point on, I'm not answering this question no more. I'm finished with the what are your butt, is your butt real or fake? I'm finished with it. So... It's up to you whether you believe it. Now it's all on you because I, I, the ball is in your court now. So you can take it and run with it. You can say, you know what? I'm going to finally believe this woman. Or you can say, you know what? Her butt ain't real. You know, that, that thing fake or whatever. I don't know. Does it make you feel better about yourself by believing that my butt is fake? So does that mean that because... You think that my butt is fake, so that means that maybe you don't have to work out now because I didn't get mine from working out and eating because I got mine from the plastic surgeon. So now you was like, well, see, I don't have to work out now because, you know, her butt, she didn't get hers from exercising or eating or whatever. So I'm not going to get mine from there. So I don't know. I, I don't know what these people think. I don't know what they have in their minds, but, you know, Sometimes when you believe something about someone or you don't you don't believe it or if you got something bad to say about someone or if you just want to just release some energy. I don't always think being doing it on the computer or doing it publicly is the right way to go. I really don't think it's the right way to go. If you sitting at lunch with your friends and you want to discuss you know, something bad about someone or you want to make derogatory comment, then, you know, do it in the privacy of your own conversation with your friends and stuff. But it really makes you look bad when you get on the Internet and you say things about other people openly and publicly, especially about people that you don't know. You just hear something and you just keep the rumor going. And those people, like I said, I feel sorry for them. But I don't worry about them because what they're doing has no type of bearing on me. As you can see, because the controversy about my butt being real or fake was so big and so huge, all it did was fuel my career. All it did was make Buffy the Body that number one stunner, basically. Uh, that's all it did. Y'all draw, the, the ones of y'all who were saying it draw even more attention to me. Y'all just drew, just kept drawing all this attention to me. <sighs> Bet you didn't even realize that you was doing that. You thought you was like maybe hurting me, but really you was helping me out and didn't even know. Didn't even know that you was helping me out. But that's basically what you was doing. And even with the bodynomics thing, the bodynomics, the fitness thing, I felt like I wanted to do this video to talk to them, to let the people who don't know about Buffy the Body and who's not familiar with Buffy the Body or bodynomics, I want them to know sort of like the story of where all this butt injections and all this stuff about my butt, where it came from. So they... I'm not trying to convince them to believe that my butt is real, but I'm, I just want them to know how it all started and why people say what they say. So now that they know, then they can sit and decide whether they're going to believe that my butt is real, whether they're not going to believe, whether what type of conclusion they're going to draw from this video, uh, what hypothesis that they're going to you know, come up with in their mind. I don't know, but 
I just felt like with me being in the fitness industry now and no longer in the hip hop industry, I just think I needed to do this video to let the ones of like the new followers and the people who's not familiar with me to sort of let them on all the, you know, take them back, you know, in retrospect, just take them back and let them know how did I get to where I, where I am now, along with the rumors and all of that. So I felt like I owed that to my new followers and my new fans of Bodynomics because I will never answer this question again. Like, what the, is, is your butt real? Is your butt fake? I'm not answering that no more. So that's why I did this video because this video will be the video where if you was wondering, you watch this video and from there, whatever you want to believe is up to you. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Not nothing. So I think I basically talked about everything I can talk about. Did I leave anything out? I don't know, but I think I talked about everything I had to talk about. About my butt being real or fake. Yes, it's real. It's, real. it's been real my entire life. And it's going to stay real. And it's going to be with me forever. And it's a part of my body. And it's not going anywhere. So you can talk, talk, talk. But it's still not going nowhere. And um, I'm always going to be Buffy. And there's always going to be a Buffy the body inside of me. Buffy the body is probably while, why I'm sitting here now. So... I loved being Buffy the Body. It was a great industry. I had a great time. Um, and I thank all of my fans. Like, I thank all of my fans. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so I give thanks to my fans. Uh, I give thanks to my followers of Bodynomics. Um, I'm not going anywhere. Bodynomics is going to be here. And I'm going to be here for as long as I can. So, um... Like I said, I don't have anything bad to say about the hip hop industry because it all it almost makes me emotional to even talk about it because it was such a, a it was a good industry, but it has a lot to do with how I carried myself in that industry. You know, I was strong minded the entire time because, like I said, I wasn't a young girl going into that industry. I wasn't 18, 19, 20. I went into my 20s at all when I went into that industry. So you got to think, I was a full-grown woman. Had been places, had done things, had been into stuff. Like, I was a grown woman. A fully grown woman when I started that Buffy the Body thing. So, And a lot of people didn't know that, but I was grown. So, that had a lot to do with my inner strength because I had already dealt with some of the things that the new girls was coming into the industry dealing with at 18, 19, 21, 22. Child, I had been there, been there, done that, had been through it, had seen it. Could no dude tell me nothing. Could no person convince me to smoke this or drink this because I wasn't a drinker. I wasn't a smoker. And wasn't nobody going to convince me that I need to be doing any one of those. Either one of those. I wasn't into drugs, wasn't into pills. I've never smoked weed before in my life. Don't even know how it feels to be high. I have dabbled with alcohol before, but um, I'm not. I don't drink. And um, pills and all that stuff, never. Um, far as gang guys running game and all that and telling me anything, and I'm naive. Child, please. I felt like I sort of grew up with a sort of street mentality a little so you can sort of see it in me sometimes so I think that helped a lot being in that going into that Buffy the body industry because and you just couldn't tell me nothing like no one could tell me nothing this is Buffy the body's show and this is how I'm running like my very first video you know I didn't do nothing about music video but my very first video I remember them telling me about wearing some short shorts or wearing this short skirt in the video and I'm like no no this is what I'm wearing I'm wearing a dress and it better almost come to my knees so and they got me a dress that almost came to my knees like I went in where I didn't let I just I, I didn't let no one guide me I basically guided myself and everything you see with Buffy the body was basically driven by me 
Because I've never had a manager. I've never in my life in the Buffy the Body, history of Buffy the Body, had a manager. Now I've had people who helped me, but I've never had a manager. Never. A lot of that stuff was controlled by men. Everything was overlooked by men. Nothing got past me. Nothing. Because I've always been sort of strong. A strong-willed type of female. Like, I've made mistakes in my life. Oh, hell yes. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. But I was over to, I was able to overcome them. And, I, you know, I think I ended up being a pretty decent person. Given, like, the lifestyle, sort of like my uh, lifestyle, you know. You know, but that's it. I talked about everything. Now you have it. This is my 100th video upload on YouTube, and I'm proud of myself. I'm in a pretty good place in my life now. So, this is what you see is what you get. This is me. So, um, yeah, so that's it. So, thanks for watching and. Become a member, my Facebook, my Twitter, um, and that's it. Thank you. Oh, you know what? One other thing I need to say. If you're following Buffy the Body on Facebook, or if you're following Buffy the Body on Twitter, or if you're following Buffy the Body on Instagram, it's not a such thing. I don't have a Buffy the Body Facebook, I don't have a Buffy the Body Twitter, and I don't have a Buffy the Body Instagram. I don't have an Instagram account, period. So I may get one at a later date, but as of this video right here, what is today? Today is the 17th or 18th of September 2012. I don't have an Instagram account. So yeah, a lot of people been creating fake Buffy the Body, Buffy Carew, Facebook, Twitters, um, Instagram. That's not me. That's not me, because I haven't created a Buffy the Body anything in a long time. Like, probably MySpace was the last thing I created, Buffy the Body. But enough of me talking. Get on with your day. But thanks for watching. Holla.